he was pointing the gun back and forth. Like he didn't know who was gonna be next. I looked at my cousin and I said, Chelsea, I love you. And I said, run. She was like dead because her lips were starting to turn blue. It was like he stood there for a minute to make sure I was dead. Hello? Hey, right, it's the 911 center. Who's this? Uh, no, it's, it's, it's okay. Now, who is this? It's Steve Buckner. Steve Buckner? Uh huh. I thought at first um, he was a really nice guy. Looking back on it, I felt like there were so many signs. Most houses, when you go there and they invite you in, you get like a, a warm welcome feeling. At his house, it was just like a cold, dark feeling. As his weirdness picked up and progressed, like he would um, go through my aunt's purse and see how much money she had, and that bothered me. And then when I found out that he would put check her mileage and put just enough gas to get to and from, that was probably the breaking point for me. So we were like, okay, you know, you guys need to get out of there. So my aunt found a new house and she was gonna move away and not tell him. But I think he eventually caught on that she was leaving him. And I think that's what pushed him over the edge because he was losing all control over my aunt and my cousin Chelsea. hearing what I thought was fireworks going off, but later realized that was the gunfire between the policeman and Stephen Buckner. Sure, we got gunshots. Uh, we found a unit. Did you copy? Yeah, we got gunshots. Sure, we found a unit. Did you copy? 325, 1023. Sure, we found a unit. Did you copy? 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 Sure, we found a unit. Did you copy?
because he wanted the easy way out, so I'm thankful that they didn't give him what he wanted. There's actually a lot of things I think could be learned from it. Just pay attention to the sign, notice the little things. Like it starts out small, but then it gradually escalates. Steven, he, um, I don't know, like manipulate my aunt. Like he would use things against her to make her feel bad, to make her feel like it was her fault. If anybody's going through it, I feel like your voice, you have a voice, you use it. Like I would go to a grocery store and I would see people and they would refer to me as the lone survivor or there's that girl. And it would make me feel really uneasy because, you know, yes, this incident happened to me, but you know, here I am trying to move on with my life and it was really hard to move on when you have people and strangers that you don't even know that would come up to you and just start talking about it. I couldn't go out into a normal life and I hated it. I felt like if I moved away that nobody could bother me anymore. And I wouldn't have that constant struggle of it being brought up every day. So I just loaded up one day and just left. And it's kind of one of the best decisions of my life because I wouldn't have my kids today if I hadn't done that. I know I may be always known as the lone survivor and I'm okay with that just because I know I'm not alone.